as we cruise around Marina Bay and begin making our way back down the Singapore River, have a look to your right at a Singapore landmark that really needs no introduction. It's the iconic Marina Bay Sands Integrated Resort, featuring a casino, hotels, and convention center, world-class entertainment and retail shops, all housed within award-winning architecture that resembles a ship atop three towers. Notice also the palm-shaped Arts and Sciences Museum and the unique Felix Bridge. This 280-meter engineering marvel has been modeled after the structure of DNA and was inspired by the Asian concept of yin and yang, built to bring wealth, happiness, and prosperity to Marina Bay. This bridge will also link you to another awe-inspiring attraction, the Gardens by the Bay. Spanning 101 hectares, this award-winning super park is home to over a quarter of a million landmarks from all over the world. Enjoy the lush outdoor gardens, huge climate-controlled dome conservatories, and towering futuristic super trees, which you can even see from this distance. They're essentially vertical gardens, measuring up to 16 stories high and linked by suspended walkways with stunning views from the entire park. Living up to their name, the super trees also collect rainwater, generate solar power, and are venting ducts for the park's conservatories, which encapsulate the cloud forest and flower dome. Do you notice that the water here is very calm? This is due to the Marina Barrage, which is a dam built across a 350 meter wide Marina Canal. It keeps out the seawater to create Singapore's first reservoir in the city, a vital source of fresh water and flood control. The Marina Reservoir is Singapore's 15th reservoir. It has the largest and most urbanized catchment area at 10,000 hectares, or one sixth the size of Singapore. Just imagine. We're now literally floating in drinking water. Perhaps the very same stuff flowing out of your taps. Cruising out into the bay, you couldn't have missed the giant wheel in the sky. That is the Singapore Fire, a skyscraping observation wheel that measures 165 meters tall, that's 42 stories high, and 150 meters in diameter. That's about the length of 87 Singaporean men lying head to toe. The wheel carries 28 city bus sized capsules, each allowing up to 28 passengers, which means that at any one time, the Singapore Fire can transport 781 passengers per revolution, which takes about 82 minutes to complete, rotating at a smooth speed of 24 centimeters per second. This engineering wonder provides breathtaking panoramic views of Singapore and the islands beyond. From on board, you can see up to 45 kilometers away. That's three kilometers more than the entire length of our island city. You'll also notice to your right or to the big swift domes unique only to the Esplanade, theaters on the bay. Because of its resemblance to the King of Fruits, To your right was once lined with lovely European style houses that brought to mind the fashionable elegance of London's Mayfair. No wonder the Esplanade was a popular place for European settlers to see and to be seen. Back in the old colonial days, they would emerge from their houses to stroll along the Esplanade every afternoon. Here they would enjoy the sea breeze, exchange gossip, and perhaps even indulge in a little innocent flirtation. 
As a nod to our colonial history, Queen Elizabeth Walk was opened within the Esplanade Park in 1953 to honor the coronation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. If you have the time, this park will take you on a pleasant meandering walk through the park to other interesting national monuments. Bridge Street ahead of us is Anderson Bridge, named after Sir John Anderson, yet another governor of the street settlements. This elegant arch displays an excellent combination of intricate plaster and metalwork, whilst its core structure provides high resistance to bending force, which comes in really handy since it supports a heavy weight of people sitting back at work daily. As a gorgeous contrast to the skyscrapers that now mark the central skyline, just look to the right and you'll see sitting grandly before us three beautifully preserved buildings that commemorate Queen Victoria, the Empress of India. The Victoria Theatre and Victoria Memorial Hall, which features the clock tower, are both historical monuments dedicated to the performance arts. Right next to them is the Empress Place building, which was constructed in 1907 entirely by convict labor. Previously known as the government offices, the Empress Place building is now also a national monument and home to the Asian Civilizations Museum. Asian Civilizations Museum is a treasure trove of history and culture that will introduce you to the world of Asian traditions. The museum features over 1,600 treasured artifacts in four themed geographical zones and includes a Singapore River Gallery dedicated to the history and people of our beloved river. Be sure to check it out for an even more intimate picture of the things you've seen and learned on this river cruise. tells the story of the Singapore River's development. Meet our nation's pioneers, coolies, merchants, traders, and financiers, all immortalized in beautifully cast bronze. There are many other surprising sculptures that dot the Singapore River promenade, and if you decide to take an exploratory walk, we promise you won't be disappointed. Blinding white plaster. Englishman Sir Thomas Stamford Rattles, the founder of modern Singapore. The statue marks the spot where Sir Rattles the first landed in Singapore in 1819. Back then, Singapore was only a sleepy little fishing village, but Rattles saw enormous potential due to a location along the main shipping route between India and China. After signing an agreement with Singapore's then ruler, Sultan Hussein of Johor, Rattles set about establishing a trading post and free port on the island for England's East India Company. He developed a town plan, drawing up residential, administrative, and commercial districts along the riverbanks of this budding island city. The large building we're passing on the right was Singapore's first courthouse, after which it became Parliament House until 1999, when the new Parliament House was developed just next to it. What is that strange disc hovering over Parliament House? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a UFO? Don't worry, what looks like something out of a sci-fi movie is actually part of the Supreme Court of Singapore. Now, this is Elgin Bridge, named after the then Governor General of India, Lord Elgin. Fittingly, the bridge served as a link between the Indian merchants on the north side of the river and the Chinese community on the south side in the days of the colonial past. 
We're now approaching Coleman Bridge, named after its Irish architect, George Drumgold Coleman, for his invaluable contributions to Singapore's development. Appointed the first superintendent of public works in Singapore, Coleman brought with him an architectural style known as Palladium, a combination of Greek and Roman styles adapted for our tropical climate. Yeah, that's what I want. So that's what you want to do. 